Hello and welcome back. It's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth and today we're playing Prime Times. And you can see there with Sleuth sitting in a coffee shop reading his favourite paper, absolute favourite paper, the Prime Times. Now, I mean, with a, with a puzzle name like Prime Times, I think it really just creates that picture. It's immediately what I thought of, that there is a paper called Prime Times and here's Sleuth reading it. Now, I did a bit of like a search just to see if I'm infringing on anyone, and I really couldn't find any paper that's actually called Prime Times, which feels like such a missed opportunity. How, how could anyone pass that? Now, I did find something, to be fair though, something called My Prime Times in Colorado, focused on seniors. Um, but yeah, I mean, publishers out there, come on. Surely this is what it's meant to be. Now, before we take a look at the actual puzzle that we have in store for today, and trust me, when I walk you through the rules, you'll truly understand why it is called Prime Times. Um, I just want to say congratulations to General Potato Salad. So if, you've not, if you're not aware, both the outro and intro are actually kind of like puzzles in themselves. So hidden in these random numbers that you see in there, and clearly invalid numbers when it comes to Sudoku puzzles, given there are even letters in there, was actually a bit of a message, which General Potato Salad actually decoded. And um, the first one in the intro, he decoded to say, Sudoku Slew solves a Sudoku case for you at enjoyment every day. Um, apparently, I made a bit of a mistake. Um, I'll have to dig into that one. And then the outro, I think he also decoded as you know, like, subscribe, and uh, support the channel on Patreon, which, you know, you could do. But something that I've been tempted to do for a while, and you can see this in this newer intro that um, actually is part of this video, is I've changed once again the grid layout, although it is a very similar puzzle. Now that General Potato Salad has actually solved it, I've been very tempted for a while to essentially, like, sneak in my own, um, like, treasure hunt, Essentially, if you're able to solve this puzzle, you get some sort of reward. But sadly, neither Patreon nor YouTube Premium is sort of cooperating. What I'm trying to figure out is how can I give people that actually manage to solve that little um, kind of hidden puzzle, like a, a premium subscription for a month or something along those lines. I still haven't figured out how to do it, but would love to hear your thoughts about whether it is something that I should continue to investigate and figure out how to do. Now, regardless, I think an extra little puzzle snuck into the introductions and outros, you know, very tempted, even tempted to actually use the music to actually hide a key in it, you know, based on what kind of um, music the key is in, it might actually help you with decrypting it message. Um, lots of ideas, so little time to get through all them all. So I would love to hear your thoughts about whether this is actually something that you'd be tempted to do and actually participate in. All right, very long introduction. Let's take a look at the actual puzzle. So we have Prime Times by Dr. Logic. And I can see that my camera is sort of hiding the rules. So let me see if I can just, yeah, there we go. Make sure that it can actually fit onto the screen. Now, don't be intimidated by the rules, sir, because it looks a little bit lengthy, but you know, it is after all a six by six puzzle by Dr. Logic. And he did give a, a one star difficulty rating. We'll see about that. So, rule sets. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So that means place the digits 1 to 6 in every row, in every column, and in every 3 by 2 box without any repeats. The second bit is the new, I don't want to call it a variant, but Dr. Logic's kind of suggested that if we like this puzzle, and I guess the community at large is not just us, um, he will actually bring the same rule set back for a 9 by 9 puzzle. Hopefully, it will be something that is indeed solvable. So, you can see here a brand new color for a line because this is a prime line. I don't think if he's actually named it, but along each blue line, the sum of all the digits along that line must equal to the product of the primes along that line. So, example, if a line had 1, 2, 3 along the line, it would add up to 6. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. It would also have a prime product of 6 because 2 
times three, that's the two product, uh, sorry, the two prime digits in there, would actually get you to six. Two times three, six. Now, if the line had one, two, and four, that wouldn't work because the sum would be seven, but the prime product, which is only the two in this case, would actually just be a two, and they're not equal to, it's clearly not equal to seven. Last thing about those prime lines, um, the numbers cannot repeat on a line, which is helpful because, you know, otherwise it looks like based on the design of these lines that they could. Anything else? Different lines may have different totals. Fair enough. Right. Um, I don't know if I need to explain it any further. I think the logic, sorry, the descriptions and the examples that Dr. Logic has given us feels like it's sufficient. If you really do get stuck, just, you know, follow along as I carry on trying to solve it in a minute or so. The rest of the rules, we have anti-knight, so a digit separated by a knight move, as in knight move in chess cannot be the same. So, for example, if this was, I'm going to deliberately pick a number that it can't be, seven, then none of these digits can be seven because these are obviously Sudoku. But also, none of these could be seven because they're a knight move away. Essentially, think of a chess knight move where you move two steps forward and one step to the left or right. So these two cells that form an L shape and the other one are not. But obviously, it's not just kind of in this dimension vertically. You can go two steps that way. Excuse me. And this cell couldn't be a seven either. I guess, you know, this cell couldn't be a seven either. So you end up with a substantial amount of the grid, as you can see, that cannot repeat this seven in here. We also have our good old faithful croppy dots. We've got digits separated by a black dot must be in a one to two ratio. I usually go with a two as an example. If that's a two, this cell here, which is connected by the black croppy dot must be in a one to two ratio. That could be literally one as in one to two or two times two as in four. Essentially, one of these must be double the other. So if everything that I just described hasn't intimidated you, and uh, you feel like picking up your favorite copy of your newspaper, The Prime Times, link will be in the description down below as usual for you to play along. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. So I feel like I need to start with the lines because it is such an empty grid. There is clearly a couple of black Kropke dots. But if you think about black Kropke dots, particularly in the context of a six by six puzzle, basically the only two digits, the only digit, not even two digits, from one, two, three, four, five, and six that I cannot place on a black Kropke dot is five. I can basically place everything else except the five. So that's really not doing a whole lot for us and therefore not the place to start. So I think our mission, should we choose to accept it, and given we're trying to solve this, we have accepted it, is to try and figure out what is the sum and the possible digits that would work on a three-cell line as well as on a four-cell line. So because they cannot repeat, the minimum this can be is one, two, three, which we know, given the example we've been given, works. So, like, if I think about all the possibilities, six, seven, eight, nine, etc. Now, the other possibility, the maximum this can be, is four, five, six, which is 15. So, essentially, I'm just going to, six, seven, eight, nine, the other possibilities are zero, one, two, three, three, four, and five. So, just think of these as 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, six, seven, eight, and nine. And I think we have to systematically step through them. So first thing that occurs to me is I don't think I can do any prime sums because let's take seven as an example. It's a prime number. So the only digits that actually multiply to seven is seven and, and one, seven times one to get us to seven. And seven is not even available in there because it's a six by six grid. So given seven is not an option, I can't have anything that is in itself a product of seven. 
So yeah, so I mean, seven, we've already explored. I mean, it's given to us as part of the rule set. Doesn't work. But I'm thinking neither does 14. Because 14 is a product of 2 and 7. No other prime digits can get us to 14. And because 7 is not available as a digit, it's just not an option. So 14 is gone. I'm going to take this further. 11 is not an option. Because again, it's 11 times 1. 13 is not an option because it's 13 times 1. We're still left with plenty of options that we're going to have to explore systematically, unfortunately. Um, I think 8 is impossible because the only way that 8 works is it's 2 times 2. times, no, hang on, 2 times 4, which is, yeah, 2 times 2. So it's 2 to the power of 3. And because of the fact that the rules says there can be no repeats, that doesn't work. Even assuming the geometry of this puzzle allows for a repeat, it, sorry, assuming the rules allow for a repeat, the most I can do is have these as two twos. That clearly has to be different because by night's move it sees this cell, and by Sudoku, it sees this cell. So a triple two definitely doesn't work. Likewise, a triple a nine, because that's three and three, also doesn't work. So no nine. We're rapidly running out of options here. Ten could be five and two. So let's think about this. If this is two and five, that's already adding up to seven. I need a three, which unfortunately is another prime number, which I would have to multiply. So essentially, the prime product of this is 30, and the sum is 10. And I don't think there's any way of not, of making 10 work, at least in three cells anyway. Two cells would work. No, even two cells wouldn't work. But three cells just can't work. So yeah, not 10. 12, that is 6 times 2, so that's 2, 2, 3, yep. So again, we're back to having to repeat the 2, which isn't allowed, so not 12. 15 is 3 and 5, which on 3 cells doesn't work, because essentially that would be 3 and 5, let's say. They add up to 8, and then the last digit has to be a 7, which just wouldn't work um, because we're only restricted to one to six. It's a very long-winded way of actually saying that this is a one, two, three line. And because they're all unique, we can color them and take a look at purple. You can see none of these are purple, not by Sudoku, not by night move. That's purple, that's the other one, two, and three. And these are from 4, 5, and 6. Now, the unfortunate part. Actually, no, this is easier. This is much easier. No, it's not easier. Because I guess this can still be... This is 4 or 6. I was thinking this has to be 6, but it doesn't. It can be a 4 with a 2. And then there's a 5 for sure in here. Right, so <laughs> onto the other prime timeline. And I wish I hadn't actually erased all of these possibilities. I think six, well, so the minimum I can do here is now one, two, three, four, that's 10. I'm pretty sure we've demonstrated 10 doesn't work because it would require the two and the five. And then I need to add up to three, which would be another one and two. And because there's a second two, I've broken the puzzle. So. 10 doesn't work, 11 doesn't work, 12, I think, re required repeated twos. Yeah, there's 2 and 2 and 3, so that doesn't work. 13 doesn't, 14 is 2 and 7, doesn't work. 15, I think we've shown could, but this line was just not big enough. So 15 would be essentially 3 and 5, and then we need to get we need to have two digits that add up to seven. 
given 3 and 5 add up to 8. 1 and 6 works. 2 and 5 doesn't because that would increase the prime product. 3 and 4 doesn't because that would increase the prime product and obviously repeat the 3 or repeat the 5. So this is one definite solid option. Um, I want to think about other options before I double down on this. So the biggest this can be is 3, 4, 5, 6, which is 7 plus 12 is 19. So we're already at 15. Is that correct? 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, because it's 21 minus the 2. No, 21 minus, it can only be 18, sorry. 3 and 4 is 7, 5 and 6 is 11, so it's 18. We're already at 15, so we just need to check 16, 17, and 18. 17 easy, prime doesn't work. Uh, 16 is, I think, impossible, because it's 2 to the 4, and all of these would basically have to be 2s, all of them repeating. So no 16. 18 would be 3 and 6, or 2, 3 and 3, which also doesn't work because we're repeating the 3. So this is actually fixed to 1, 3, 5, 6. And these are 5, so they, one of them is 5. They both see this cell. This is not a 5. In fact, it's easier. This is on a black crop key dot. If that's 6, this has to be 3. If that's 4, that would have to be 2, which is not allowed for some reason. Yeah, because it's not part of the product sum. So this is 3, 6, this is now 4, 5. Nine, none of these can be 3. I've used it from the line. This 6 can see these two cells. These are not 6. This is the 6. And now we're well and, all, well and truly on our kind of, you know, on the go. Wow. Almost 10 minutes to get this far, though. And I think it will be relatively straightforward from here. So this is not a 3. Um, what's the easiest way to do this? Sixes, where can it be? Six, none of these, that's the only place for a six. Sudoku, that's the only place for a six. Um, neither of the, none of these can be a six. Six eliminates all of this, including the night move. Well, the night move also eliminates this one. That's the only place for a six. And we've done sixes. Threes next, maybe? One of these is a three, but not sure. Well, there is another blue-green up there. Given we've got all the other digits. Do I want to go down the coloring route? I'm sure it's needed. It's got to be an easier way than what I'm thinking. Probably this black crop kit will help us. So clearly it's not 6 and 3. In fact, here is an easier one. Blue and green are not down here. These are blue and green. Meaning this is from 1, 2, and 3. However, I know it's not a 3 because that can only pair up with a 6, which is definitely not. So that's 1 or 2. And this, therefore, is 1, 2, or 4. And then there's a definite 2 in here. Making these not 2 because they can. this cell can see both of these, you know, with Sudoku and Knight's variant. So none of these is, are 2. It's not very helpful, if I'm honest. Right, I'll just... Oh, come on, sleuth. Knight's move, knight's move. That's not blue, that's green, that's blue. Yeah, 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 that, that's easier. Just purple is now here. This is four and five. This is one, three. Uh, these are four, fives. They both see this cell, Sudoku and knight's move. That's a one. That's a five. This one here now sees both of these cells. I love anti-knight move and anti-king move when it comes to six by six because, you know, whatever cell is basically at the bottom here of these two by threes immediately is forced into one of these two cells. So this one is in here. This five gives us the four, the five. This four gives us another four and five because of knight's move. 
Um, this 1, 3 gives us the 2, that's 2. And therefore, that's not 2, this is 1 and 3, 1, 3, that doesn't help. No, this one does, yep, that's 3, 3, 3, 1. Uh, we have 1 and 2 now in here. Which, ironically, I can't actually resolve at the moment. That's 1, which I can, that's 2, that's 1, that's 2. I'll fix the colors later. That's four and five. In fact, I can do this. That's the five. That's the four. Just knights move again. One in this box is in here. That's the four. I need five, which has to be in here. Three. I need four, which can only be in there. That's the two. And then just Sudoku to finish. I need five and four, and that's four. And if I've not made any mistakes, that's four. Sorry, let me just quickly fix that. There you go. And if I've not made any mistakes, that's five and the solution to today's puzzle. Lovely puzzle, Dr. Logic. Um, I admit I'd, I'm intimidated by the idea that a nine by nine grid could come along. At the same time, the number of options that are actually available on these lines, particularly if you keep the restriction of repeated digits are not allowed, there are actually not that many. So I think it's probably worthwhile seeing a 9 by 9 and I imagine it will actually be simpler to solve than it may initially seem. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed the puzzle. I absolutely did. Uh, Dr. Logic, looking forward to a harder version of this. Uh, you know, get your copy of Prime Times, of course. And um, hope that you enjoyed the video as well. See you back for the next one. Bye for now.